I'll kind of give an opinion on this is if anybody's followed our content up until this point in time, we have been saying this for three years. And this is hugely important. And it feels nice to know that we're on the precipice of being unequivocally right in, in what we felt was coming. But before all of this, you know, there, there was really some things that we saw and, and it was just that pure pass through setups are almost always going to run into higher taxes and lead 25 years of experience in the business consulting space, helping business owners just slash their taxes, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a year. What are some things that they, they really need to focus on when they're considering optimizing their entity for this modern world? Yeah, thanks, Josh. And, you know, I, I love your excitement around marketing. You know, now I can get excited because we're talking about numbers again and I can get back in the game. <laughs> right? So, but, you know, you know, one of the things, just take a, a little bit of a historical walkthrough, right? For a lot of business owners, you know, dentists, doctors, anybody that's entrepreneurial, when they first get started, you know, they set up an entity, they set up an LLC, they go to the accountant, they have the accountant help them set them up. They might be a disregarded entity at first, they start to make more income. And then they, you know, they really take a look at that S corporation, right? And that S corporation at first was set up to lower the self-employment taxes for the individual business owner. And that was all well and good. The problem is as that income continues to move higher and higher and higher, you know, two things occur. One, they either abuse the S corporation by um, eliminating self-employment tax in the wrong way, or they're taking more and more income through their K-1s. And, you know, that was really the model for years and years and years. And, it, you know, any other entity structure could have possibly created double taxation for that uh, doctor or that business owner. And we were in a graduated tax schedule on the, on the, the C corporation side too. And so they were kind of trapped. They're kind of trapped in having to use that S corporation. Well, the last four years have been a whirlwind in the tax world, right? Because we had 2017 with the tax, tax jobs, you know, CARE Act. And then 2018 rolls around and we have our first year we can use that new tax code. And then COVID hits in 2019. Then all of a sudden we're in PPP and EIDL. And it's just been a kind of a whirlwind from a tax perspective. I think my call to action now is get off the tip of the iceberg, right? Because that tip of the iceberg was really dealing with how do I replace lost income because of COVID? How do I run through some of these, these various tax programs that are set up for me? But now here we are in 2022. And for a lot of people, they're still in that pass-through entity where they're making huge overpayments and they're doing it because it's comfortable. They've gotten so used to running their business for a year, go to their accountant at the end of the year, the accountant adds everything up and say, yep, you owe 90, 100, $140,000, write me a check on April 15th. And it's an unnecessary check that, need, that does not need to be written. And the reason I say that is there's a lot of strategies within the tax code that you can put in place if you do it correctly. You know, for a lot of people that we're working with, we're setting not one year tax strategy, but five year tax strategies where we're taking a look at if you make entity changes over a five year period, here's how much you're going to save in taxes. I'm not talking about deferring taxes to pay down the road. I'm talking about actual savings and taxes. And it's using the tax code to your advantage and set up your entity so it's bulletproof from overpaying Uncle Sam dollars you don't need to pay them. Absolutely. And I think that that's that's it's a it's such a big piece where where it's all about, you know, what can you do for me now? And and what we have found. You know, we've learned a lot of things work. We've also learned a lot of things don't work. And one of the things that don't work are really, you know, what what about right now? Because what happens is people get themselves in these these you know stepped you know you know deals where basically it's really hard to unwind. And and the I think the the mainstay the kind of word for the year is is going to be agility. And and agility comes from really being positioned in a sophisticated way. Thanks for adding, for, for opining on that, Lee's click. Yeah, clarity. I think what's important to understand too, Josh, is when we talk about entity changes and taxing your entities in the correct fashion using the tax code, we're talking about using the tax code to run your business and allowing your business structure to follow the tax guidelines. We're not talking about crazy, you know, tax programs, if we will. And we've seen yeah. them over the years, right, Josh? Yeah. 
this captive insurance where well, hey, conservation make, easements. Yeah, exactly. I can I can make a four hundred thousand dollar premium. The Augusta rule. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, and one of the things just to to opine on a little bit too, right, is that the federal government collects revenue on an annual basis, and in two thousand twenty one, they collected three point eight six trillion dollars. Eighty six percent of that came from payroll and income taxes, and so the money, the budget for the government is largely collected through payroll and taxes, right? Either payroll taxes or income taxes. It's also very, very confusing because there's 75,000 pages of tax code. And so it's not like someone can sit down and read through 75,000 pages and find every single legitimate business deduction for every single client. Every time it's updated. Yeah, correct. And so one of the things that we've begun to use, you know, as you know, is using AI technology, where we have technology, we can go in and we can take a tax return, we can run it through a computer system, and it gives us some red flags of places to go to look for legitimate tax savings for our clients. And we're, we're finding 40 to 60, $80,000 of savings by using that technology. And the other thing just, I think, you know, to really um, point out is, you know, when you take a look at the IRS, there's 82,000 employees at the IRS. That's a 4,000 to one ratio. So for every employee at the IRS, there's 4,000 taxpayers. And I think one of the things that a lot of accountants use with clients needlessly is scare tactics, scaring them into, well, if you do that, you're gonna get audited or you do that, you're gonna get audited. Sometimes audit's not a bad word, right? If you're legitimately losing, using the tax code, if you're documenting what you're doing, and they want to waste their time coming out and learning how you're using the tax code to your advantage. Why not? You know, an audit is only a problem if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Yep. And, you know, over the course of my career, you know, I've been involved in, uh, you know, five, six audits. And in each of those audit situations, no findings, right? Where someone has come out, they've taken a look at the strategies They've run their numbers. They've looked at the code and they said, okay, you guys are, you guys are in line. You're good to go. Thank you. It's only when you're trying to do shifty things that an audit should be um, an issue for you. Yeah. Or even trying to do like legitimate things that you just can't really articulate or explain. Right. Those are the things too, right. Is sometimes, sometimes complexity does not equal sophistication. Right. Correct. And I, and I think the biggest thing is, you know, we're taking this, we can't, you know, we know a human's not going to be able to read all this all the time. We know that the American business owner funds 86% of the federal government's revenue, that there's not enough people to chase us down. This is really a voluntary system, right? It's saying right. that, you know, by default, you're going to pay as much as you possibly can. It's up to you to reduce it. We're going to give you over 70,000 pages to figure that out. And we might come chase you down. And, and ultimately, at the end of the day, um, we've kind of taken that in stride, right? And we've said, hey, challenge accepted. We appreciate what you guys are doing and, and we have a responsibility to our clients and what we're doing for them as well. And, and so when we do this with practices over a million in revenue, we're finding $50,000 in tax overpayments just using straight pass-through models. I'm gonna pause for a minute. $50,000 in practices that make over 1 million in revenue a year using straight pass-through models um, and, and we welcome anybody that thinks that we can't save them that much money. And we'll show you that we can just in taxes, because the truth is at the end of the day, you wear a lot of hats and where your profit is derived from, it can be, and it should be accounted for independently on its own. Um, these low benefit strategies, like excessive K1 distributions to avoid payroll taxes is just going to cause you more harm than good, uh, making entities to just write off expenses for no tax benefit what, whatsoever. Like we run into these things a lot, right? Really making sure that you get your entity structured properly is going to help you stay flexible across multiple five-year strategic changes. And five years, by the way, is typically the amount of time you need to run an entity. It's typically sunset provision, timeline durations from the IRS in terms of when they kind of renew laws and regulations. And so five years is perfect, right? And that's the difficulty we always have is we're trying to run 20, 25 year long strategies inside of four and five year tax changes. And so it just doesn't work. Yeah. And, you know, Josh, one of the things that we see all the time too, is, you know, 
a lot of business owners are really trying to deal with really small, minute things to try to save tax dollars where they have their kids on their website or and they're taking a deduction for that or they claim that they use their car 100% of the time for business, but they only have one car or, you know, the list goes on and on and on, right? And yeah, I, I like to call it your mind, you're, you're majoring in the minors, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very minor things where the, yeah. the, the, the pot of gold is right in front of you, you yeah. know? there are ways to legitimately save significant tax dollars. Why are you spending a lot of time on these little things that have very little impact to your overall tax strategy, but create huge red flags for the IRS? Absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I think when we see this, right, is, is in the, the challenge being is, is challenge us, right? It's like, we're not gonna challenge you on how we can save you this money or something else. It's just come kick the tires. Come kick the tires and see what it is that we can do for you. See what we're up to and what we're about. And I will promise you that we will, at a minimum, deliver some value to you. And at a minimum, you will say, I learned a ton. And, and maybe I want to go do it on my own. That's fine. We haven't run into a lot of people that do that. Um, but ultimately, we're here to try and improve the lives of business owners and their families, help them recapture time, decrease their stress, increase their cash flow, and truly live the life that they're trying to live, that they deserve to live. Because at the end of the day, you're footing 86% of the country's bill. And so we want to make sure that everything kind of comes together the way that it should and that it ought to, and that there is money here today for you. And, and we're going to do two things, right? One, offer to you that we can help you find this on your own. And two, if you're not ready yet, join us on our journey, right? Join us on our journey. And if you're to do it yourself or do it yourself, we encourage that. And if at any point in time you ever need help, come back and see us and we'll help, we'll help provide some guidance that you may need.